So hello, everybody, and welcome um, to the panel that is dedicated to redefining the marketing departments in the AI era. So hello, fellow colleagues, AI enthusiasts, and just coffee junkies who are actually manually managing the marketing departments with their bare hands. Kudos to you. So welcome to our group video chat with two lovely gentlemen. Uh, and we will try to find an answer today to a pretty ominous question. How will AI redefine our marketing teams? And will it, if all, if at all? So my name is Anna, and I'm a brand and comms director at Data Art. Um, this is a global tech company. We are a partner for progress uh, that builds future-proof technology for market leaders. We have quite a big team of different various marketing experts who are servicing two various, um, very different based business models. But nevertheless, this is B2B and B2C. And as many of you, we are in the middle of the budgeting exercise. And it sucks, right? Because where should we invest more in the next year? Should it be team extension, upskilling, reskilling? Maybe we should um, invest more into partnerships with subcontractors. Should we hire an agency? Should we invest into AI tools? Well, we don't know because, well, there are different paths to success. So today we'll be discussing this burning issue with Martin Fagioli. Hi, Martin. Uh, he's the founder of Folio Me. Uh, this is a um, uh, a startup that is revolutionizing the insurance business with AI. And these guys have an impressive product. Please check out the link in the chat. Um, uh, they are pretty, pretty uh, incredible. And we have Igor Akimov, um, the AI solutions product lead at Spike, uh, which is a project management tool, It's um, which is, has a full-scale solution for automated workflows, planning, data visualization, resource allocation. Basically, it's a dream come true uh, for any visualization of workflow. Uh, I'm a big fan uh, of this tool as well. So, fellas, let's briefly look back on the critical milestones in the evolution of marketing. Um, let's go as, as back as the 50s. Uh, imagine your Don Draper, um, basically in the setting of Mad Men, and we're in the era of adver uh, advertisement versus distribution. And uh, this is the time uh, where everybody had to be a Don Draper to make a career in marketing. Later on, when we have uh, invented the internet as the species, which was a pretty good uh, idea, I think, we entered the era of um, traditional media versus digital media. That was the rise of tools and demand for digital digital savvy marketing skills. And uh, this was also the time when that you had to have an award to understand that you have achieved great success in your marketing career. Later on, we moved on to the era of creative versus performance. Some people were advocating for beauty and uniqueness of special promotional pieces. Others were advocating for maximum repetition, basically hypnotode that um, is just hypnotizing you from everywhere you see. That was also the era when the 99 Franks um, novel was written and the agencies ruled the world. In-house marketing was pretty much a project and budget management skill. Um, at least for me, that was the time when I joined uh, the festival, um, and I still remember those times. Later on, we, we moved to experience versus value proposition. Basically, what's more important, brand or sales support? How many brands do we need? Because everybody wanted their own brand for everything. And the real superpower for marketing people was understanding how to translate business needs from data, from various insights um, into um, um, marketing strategies. And at the moment, um, most of product managers are doing that and not the marketing departments anymore. So the profession has moved on to a, a bit different landscape. And where we are now is the place where we have consumer-centric marketing with complex consumer journeys. If you look at the possibilities, which are basically limitless, you might be confused because on one hand, we have non-linear privacy regulations. And um, on the other hand, we have total metric in uh, mess in the metrics. If you go to any conference, various marketing people will say different things and you don't really know who to believe because every business is a NOAA's arc uh, with very diverse success stories and not a single brand leader looks the same anymore. So what should we track? Um, 
um, who should we hire? And for example, what we do at Data Art, we are even using um, uh, folkloristics as a way to reach our audience and to um, get their attention. So please check out the link in the chat if you're interested and to see if you're interested in this uh, history of IT. So guys, what is next? What will be the implications of AI? Can anyone who can operate the holy trio of modern AI tools, uh, which is uh, basically what Grammarly, uh, ChatGPT, Midjourney, or Dolly3, and can you substitute the whole marketing department single-handedly? Why should we invest in marketing teams and not in tools? So I think that many brand and marketing leaders are quite confused and um, I think that you have something to say about it, right? Because you are the beholders of the AI knowledge. So guys, what do you tell your clients when you pitch your automated uh, project management solutions, Igor, especially to the marketing teams? So what do you say? Yeah, sure. So Rake is a kind of unified workflow kind of work management software. And of course, we are popular among marketers and IT department and uh, sales and so on. And um, we introduced generative AI facilities some time ago, about like half a year ago. And we actually were quite afraid that people will not use it. Uh, we will use it, uh, we were scared to use it and so on. So we actually introduced only a small portion of, of uh, things that can be possible to do. But we realized that actually people replace quite a lot of things they did manually with generative AI. So we thought that uh, probably we'll use it to you know, summarize long uh, dis discussions or I don't know some long articles and so on. But they started to create lots of content and not just like copywriting, like articles, some creative things that actually uh, large language networks are good at, but also um, uh, really good uh, project structures, uh, like calendars of, for example, uh, tasks to prepare for some event, uh, some marketing campaigns description. So the uh, like documents that is possible to actually build or create only by like senior managers, senior marketing managers with past uh, experience, past knowledge. And actually people are really um, looking forward to use more and more advancements in AI to help them do their work better, uh, faster, <laughs> cheaper, and so on. And they, of course, want to kind of aug augment their skills, not just to replace someone and a junior marketing manager, but actually to help them achieve more uh, with current tools, uh, with uh, all the like possibilities of ChatGPT and so on, and majority, uh, and so on. And actually, do the most like interesting part or you know most you know skillful part to actually uh, not create something from scratch but actually add your ideas enhance the story uh and uh, enhance the images that are created to create even more engaging content and so on so this is more about amplifying the skills of professional marketing managers even or like junior levels, but also to director levels. And uh, of course, if you're not using it right now, I think you're a bit behind because um, you actually doing maybe like less, but you can possibly do with the help of generative AI and all the things we do now. Um, so this is mainly about again enhancing your facilities. Like you have like exoskeleton or you have super power somewhere and uh, super kind of assistant that have um, knowledge about marketing, worldwide marketing, so uh, kind of uh, from many different companies, good companies, that helps you to achieve more and be like, more satisfied of what you do, of your outcome, something like that. Thank you for supercharging us, Igor. I think that more marketing teams will feel empowered uh, with um, the tools like that. Um, and hopefully, yeah, that, um, they will not automate us uh, after all, but it uh, doesn't look like it at the moment, nevertheless. So Martin, what about you? What do you tell your clients? Because you have a very interesting niche as well. That is your primary source of business. The industry of insurance is, um, I think, not so much well known for many, uh, for many people. So could you tell us what's going on behind the scenes there? Absolutely, Anna. Uh, and 
also thanks for the invitation. Really appreciate this discussion panel with such great professionals. So uh, before diving into insurance, uh, I think we're in the era of the personal assistant and the way in the 80s, personal computers boomed and by the 90s, almost everybody had it at work to be able to do much more tasks that we, they, we were able to do beforehand. And by we as a human being, uh, not myself, I, I was already immersed when the personal computer was already there. Uh, so it's not that I've been part of this journey. Um, but I think we are in, in that way uh, with personal assistance powered by AI. And I don't know about you, but it's the first time I use a personal assistant, call it the, the chat GPT or whatever other LLM powered assistant, that it's really helpful. Uh, I recall Clippy, I was there, the Microsoft Office Assistant was not helpful at all. Uh, and I think we're now in the era of personal assistants that could help us leverage a lot more workload. But still, we need to focus on what makes us as professionals, uh, the different traits, because we will all be able to access these personal assistants. So I think it's uh, the two sides of the coin. We need to use them. We still need to identify which are those traits that will help us be different than the other professionals individually and as a company, of course. And now diving particularly into insurance, uh, we provide a solution to empower the insurance agents. In particular, we don't believe that insurance distribution will be run without insurance agents. We believe they have a central role, especially because insurance, it's a product, either the personal lines or the commercial lines that we are not looking after purchasing, but rather we need to purchase to coverage a specific risk. So it's not something that we are looking such as for uh, fashion that we like to search for fashion and we get into the very details or tech, for instance, which we are. Insurance, it's a need we either know that we have or we don't know and we want to be uh, uh, advised by someone who is uh, very expert in the area. And this is why the agent, in our opinion, will not uh, be eliminated, but transformed. And this is why we are building a AI tool for them to be shining at what they do best. That is actually assessing risk, uh, assessing how to cover that risk better, which is the best product to cover those risks in order to reduce that friction for someone that needs coverage, either a person or a company. Uh, and this is where we have been focusing, trying to understand which of their customers are more likely to churn eventually, which are the customers that would like to need other coverages or other products by using tons of data. And this is a, the magic of AI. There's no limit in the amount of data we can process, not because of the AI, but because of the computing power that has been rising in the last 10 years. And then again, there are multiple experimentations you can do with the customer journey. I know we will be diving into that, so I don't want to spoil it, uh, but I think, yeah, uh, to long story short, insurance uh, is also in that route to get personal assistance to become uh, more productive at the agent level. Well, guys, I totally agree with you because I'm personally a huge fan of all the AI assistants. I have uh, the Holy Trio, of course, and I cannot imagine writing any piece of content uh, without ChatGPT anymore. That's just uh, impossible. He's my best friend. And by the way, yesterday I created my own first assistant on the base of ChatGPT, which is um, incredibly cool. And I highly advise you guys to play around with it as well. Uh, so yesterday, um, I was uh, watching the other session that we had within IT Nonstop, and it was called the future of skills. And there was a very interesting idea uh, that um, I will try to rephrase it right now. So that most people are scared that they personally will be automated and basically people are afraid of the unknown right of the ai itself and this are basically like modern ludits you know are afraid of technology but the uh, most interesting and fascinating idea that i heard there was that the guy said that it will be the teams the people who will reject other people who are not using AI or have no idea how to use AI enhancers, and that will be the biggest barrier of uh, getting into the most productive supercharged teams if you want to build a career in marketing. So what do you think, guys? I think it's a fascinating thought. Yeah, yeah. I remember when it was first started, I, I heard this like thought and it was like repeated, I don't know, like every week that you will not be replaced by AI but you will probably be replaced by people who use AI. So if you're that person 
then you are kind of in a safe place. So please invest your time in, I don't know, understanding it, using using it like every day or, I don't know, motivating your manager to, I don't know, help in, invest some money in, into buying some stuff and you'll be safe. Uh, and I think it, it can be just another skill. Like, okay, you uh, want to hire a marketing manager then you have you need to work with i know google at, at manager and so on and you need to create some things via chat gpt and maybe you need some uh, you have some like, homework okay do these things we'll check and you can do it i know in 10 minutes if you're quite professional in this sphere or use it previously and that's it you're done and you can, can apply for this job and be really productive in this new team and and i think um the, the main idea or the, the risk here is that uh, if you just start a new company, uh, then previously you, you had to, again, have quite a lot of specialists around you from marketing, sales, uh, I don't know, uh, technical specialists and so on. But now you can move to actually quite far just by your own or with just two people with, again, augmenting your uh, development skills, just asking ChatGPT to write something or a specific uh, development skill and do marketing plans and also create sales scripts and use like LinkedIn sales navigator to outreach people. And actually this kind of new companies who really run quite quite far without hiring new people. And, and this is actually like I think disrupting market a bit uh, with all these like, changes. But for large companies, I think um, again, if you, use it if you really have a good outcome out of it then you're uh, in, in safe position and you definitely not need to worry but you'll be uh, when someday you come to work and then seeing just nothing in your workplace so just in a box what you do your work or something like that that sounds ominous um yeah so martin you're a ceo um tell us would you hire anybody who rejects the ai tools That's a tricky question. I'd ask them why they do reject it before evaluating myself. Like if there's a clear uh, reasoning behind that, I'd evaluate it. But it would be like, in my opinion right now, like uh, rejecting what you can do with the internet. Like why would someone reject it? Uh, they, have, they have to have a clear reasoning behind that, that it's fully convincing for me to be able to say, okay, they might have a point. But in my opinion, it's kind of in the internet uh, realm. Um, that being said, I wanted to kind of uh, touch base with one aspect that we were discussing. I think uh, the marketing role in the last 10 years, maybe as you were putting it, like performance marketing has been in the realm of almost every marketer or every marketing department at least. And as a marketing myself, we have been already into even if you do not know Python, maybe you touched SQL, you know some programming, and it, it's not quite of a difference what you can make with ChatGPT. Although you can do a lot of different things like analyze and do not depend on a data scientist to analyze your data set and, and to take insights. You can do it by yourself. We can dive into it later. But I think other professionals that may have been a bit uh, more separated into programming uh, like maybe sales professionals. In our case, our customers, the ins insurance agents, they have now opened a full new window to be able to solve some problems that they depended beforehand on either a programmer or a data scientist to solve. Uh, and now they can do them fully by themselves, at least up to a certain level where they can validate that it makes sense to hire someone else. But I think this window that, uh, AI assistance offer is just incredible and will certainly shake a bit uh, the market for certain tools. That's a very interesting thought, Martin. So I would like to um, uh, develop from there because you uh, touched the point of um, making an AI product yourself. So what do you think um, about like AI products? Um, uh, the marketing of AI products. Do they need anything but rich building campaigns? Because every time I um, see a demo of some AI tool, or like even if I download it and I go on through the impeccable and boring processes and learning cur curves, I start asking myself, 
do AI products actually need anything to promote themselves? Or because it seems like they're moving the users down the funnel themselves because they're so intuitive. So how do you approach this with your own product, guys? Yeah, so regarding Rike, uh, so Rike is a kind of complex product with lots of different tools, lots of way of doing things because you can actually customize it to your needs. So yeah, if you're a small company or like large department, then you are able to like adapt everything we, we have inside and um, actually customize it to make it more personal and fit your needs. And this creates a problem for uh, onboarding of new clients because they really see like this lots of different tools inside and uh, maybe not understand like, what to choose from uh, and then this problem can be helped with the help of AI uh, and we see uh, something like this um, like kind of AI onboarding um, in, in different tools then you just write what you need or what you're searching for or what's your problem and then you create uh, a structure or the structure is created for you based on just like some work from the chat uh, API and some like APIs inside product and you have some basic structure tailored to you with different tools kind of set up to I mean uh, make sure it, it like shines and then you you it's much easier for you to start not start from scratch but start from something. And again, this is kind of next level. So currently we have a set of kind of templates. Uh, so we have some kind of search engine uh, that helps you to choose from different uh, search templates, some kind of AI magic inside. But in general, this can be a next step. And this could be a next step for, for quite a lot of products uh, because of course people know how to chat. They know this like feeling, they know this like pain, they can uh, tell about this pain to sales manager or customer success manager and to AI assistant, and it's actually your turn to understand people's intent and I know using your knowledge base or your expertise to understand what tools uh, to actually set up for a user. And then the flow will be really, really great. And again, the onboarding will be just like as smooth as it's possible. Um, and I think we will see quite a lot of such things uh, later, probably I know, in a month or two in, in many, many different products. Of course, there are quite a lot of like, development uh, efforts uh, needs to be done to make it work, but I think it, it pays off. Yeah, uh, it's fascinating. I am I personally addicted to Duolingo, for example. This owl is just haunting me. Which language? <laughs> yes. Which language yes. are you learning? A German, yes. Okay. I'm restoring my German and, and my French. Uh, so, guys, uh, I just am very fascinated with the tools and hooks and tricks and what can be done even within the product. Uh, so, kudos to all the people who are making this amazing tech products. So, Martin, what are your thoughts on that, on the marketing of AI products themselves? Yeah, I think uh, I've been working for AI for in AI in the AI field uh, for eight years now. So before this, I was working for an AI consulting firm. We built different AI products for different industries, one of them insurance, and then we built our own startup, as we already mentioned, to empower the insurance agent with AI. Um, let me tell you that since the chat kind of boom, and, and by the chat, I mean the large language models became super popular. It's, um, I would not say tricky, but whenever you say your product is with AI, it's kind of a redundancy now. Like everybody does have it. So I think it's a challenge on actually how you position yourselves, not just to put that as the main difference from other products, but you need to be able to communicate an additional value proposition that it's either, in our case, we very much focus it on a given customer persona, as we were saying, the insurance agent. Um, and well, there are other products that do position themselves more generalists, but with clear use cases. Um, however, it's becoming very tough to compete with open AI. So you need to become very, in my opinion, this as a strategy to become very unique, either in a problem or in a customer niche, uh, to become super, uh, competitive as a, a purely AI product, right? Then you have other products that include AI as uh, Rike in this case, that could empower 
uh, certain use cases that they were not being able to do before, such as a product feature. Correct me, Igor, if, if, this, if this is not the case. Um, yeah, uh, but I think that's a main challenge. Like everybody's doing AI. What is different from you to uh, get uh, out in the public in a better position? I think that's the biggest challenge we have right now. And moreover, um, uh, OpenAI has recently announced that they're launching a marketplace for AI products within their ecosystem. Well, you can see the style of Microsoft, right? To create a uh, marketplace everywhere they go. <laughs> so it will be interesting to see how the competition changes. And um, at the moment, there are companies, there's a huge business that promote you, for example, on Amazon, which is an ecosystem for sales, right? Um, people know how to get your product in top in um, Apple Store or Google Play. So it's fascinating and it will be very interesting to see how this will change the marketing of AI products. Because on one hand, they have uh, just single-handedly in one second killed many startups because, well, they did that. But on the other hand, they have empowered a number of other startups. They have in a way, uh, made it more accessible for smaller startups to actually um, to actually highlight their project, uh, to make it closer to bringing to the people. Have you um, already contemplated a bit on the launch of the marketplace within OpenAI? So I, I tried it uh, by myself. Uh, I tried to build like several uh, bots, patient ChatGPTs. Actually, I'm, I was quite excited about everything was was announced. I even wrote in like uh, reviews of everything what was presented and uh, actually it was really exciting they, they changed um, they fixed quite a lot of like issues around like open AI usage but actually uh, like data science team have had to fix previously and it took them um, and like several months or even half a year uh, to provide the infrastructure to work successfully with open AI again with uh, all this like knowledge uh, with like all this long-term memory and so on now it's kind of already inside opening api and everyone can use it so it's really really a new start new beginning so if you're thinking about something like that you should definitely think about in, in implementing something inside your product it's really easy and can really give value so regarding uh, chat gpt store so it's not available right now uh, only kind of links kind of private public links there are some catalogs right now they are quite uh, messy so you, you don't have i don't know sometimes categories uh, or search uh, so just a list of things similar to what we have i don't know what what we have previously without a search engine like a list of websites and so on so it's like early stage but i think that it will be a, a new marketing sphere i don't know the kind of gpt store marketing manager something like that there will be, I'm sure, there will be some tools like, I don't know, ratings, uh, some kind of backlinks, or kind of review the like quality of reviews, um, maybe with some explanations, uh, maybe some retention, so how users are activated, whether we use it each day or maybe use it once, and it will affect your position, for example, when you search for something. And, and so, people who do business uh, in this sphere who want to use this store to promote their like main product. Who definitely invest their efforts to be in like on top position because i think there will be quite a lot of similar tools for example i know a summary of something a creation of some like email responses or maybe some you know, personal coaches or fitness instructors uh, so there will be someone on first place who earn i know 80 percent of attention and then others so you, you have definitely have to check what what's happening there maybe it, it will be your kind of new new role and new exciting journey so yeah yeah it, it looks very really good i don't think it will be as big as uh, app store and so on but it can be a really good uh, marketing tool for lots of products martin i yeah, no, agree or against this amazing uh new platform <laughs> if you position it as amazing it's hard to be against it right uh, <laughs> i know i'm biased i still do I'm agree so sorry. i still do agree i still do agree yeah. uh, i like how this kind of well search engine optimization um before 2010 uh then we had app engine optimization and now potentially we we have gpt uh store optimization it could be an evolution of how to better rank because yeah we all know this uh 
what it means to be in the first page of results and not to be in the uh, 10th position and over. So yeah, this is a, a, an interesting path to SEO teams or SEO professionals or app optimization professionals uh, or for even new people that want to get into the field. It's certainly something that it's, uh, in my opinion, uh, will rise uh, because this new channel is driving a lot of usage and usage drives uh, opportunities for other business to build on top. So absolutely agree. Okay. So we are on an interesting journey uh, where to new roles and new skills. And uh, well, if somebody goes further, then somebody should like be left behind most likely, right? So Martin, um, tell me what functions are you already substituting with AI in your respective marketing department? Or maybe your clients uh, have shared some stories, uh, what skills they have been already substituting? Because at the moment, basically, you can do low level design and writing and editing and proofreading by yourself. Same goes with the press releases, circulation, uh, and even generation, and even part of brand management, like personas, positioning, and digital planning, it's already substituted. It can be, okay, it's not fully substituted, but it can be substituted by many AI tools, uh, if they are, of course, used by the people who know what they're talking about. So tell me the cases, give me uh, give me the, uh, the core examples, yeah. of some businesses. I think there are two functions uh, that I'd say not substituted, but heavily uh, incorporated into the marketing team, which in the past, maybe you would, you would have needed someone or another professional, at least part time. One, you mentioned it, design. Um, we are a startup, so it's not that we have super large design requirements, but we still do have our requirements. And within the marketing team, we are able, you, you mentioned a trifecta of products. Uh, I would add a fourth, uh, at least in our, that it's Canva. And they recently introduced uh, a whole new AI uh, abilities for design, which has also been quite helpful. But before even getting into the AI, it was also quite helpful too. So design uh, in what has to do with branding, if we want to change our color palette, we have been evaluating this with AI tools and we are able to create very good designs with it, at least at the level where we are at right now. Of course, for the UI of our product, we still count with design, which is UX UI designers. It's not around the aesthetics, but also about the usability. So that is not being in our in our in our case being uh, extended with AI tools. So design for marketing, I think, could be very much empowered within the same team. And the second one, we have been already been touching it around, which is data analysis. Uh, we have multiple information from our clients, our usage. And we are able to understand way better how to market our product if we understand their usage and particularly how they're uh, not only interacting with, with our tool, but also what they're saying, what they're not saying. So being able to do this internally, to do this data analysis, product data analysis within the marketing team to then get better conclusions on how to market better, either different campaigns, improve the positioning. It's something that beforehand in my prior job, we needed to work alongside with a data science team, either to do, uh, for instance, um, word classification or entity recognition or extraction, or eventually to understand which are customers that are more likely to purchase other products. And we can now do it fully within uh, the marketing team, at least at the level we want it. If we want to become very, very specific, we might still need a data science team. But as of now, we just need data input. We analyzed it uh, through LLMs and we get results back. Kind of a data analyst is supporting our team. I think those are the two functions I'd say right now. Oh my God. I remember when data science was a new profession <laughs> and now it's heavily affected by AI. Oh la la, interesting times. So Igor, what about your clients? What's the feedback from the market? What uh, skills are they already substituting? Yeah, so I think number one is uh, content generation, uh, mainly text because it's easier and uh, kind of cheaper. Uh, so actually clients can generate again, thousands of articles. And uh, of course you need um, kind of man in the middle. You need someone to check because it was a really funny story when we created this like generative AI facilities inside, right? And we need to um, create a video uh, to actually show to our clients and to 
uh, employees, how it works. And it generated a really nice uh, press release about this AI features with uh, really like lots of different elements, what was right, the company name, the CEO name, like every structure was beautiful. But then I, I, I started uh, recording and actually it changed the structure a bit. Uh, and it was kind of fake, so we started hallucinating. And then like on the second try, it was like even worse. So after uh, 15 tries, I at least received more or less something similar to what I was able to achieve at the first step and, and showed in the video. So it's not automatic machine at all for now. You have to worry, you have to be worried about uh, these hallucinations and so on. I have to check everything. But in general, again, if you start from scratch and compared to what you can do with ChatGPT and, and create again, like just tons of, of drafts, then you can update and uh, then fix and uh, maybe enhance with other materials. Then you can do, I don't know, twice as much than it was possible before. And second thing is uh, the design as well. Uh, so uh, we have some kind of internal tool to create uh, uh, kind of design for web for articles for social media that actually use uh, generative ai plus our kind of templates to make it more like corporate style not just some you know, fairy tales and so on but more stick to corporate colors and so on it works more or less reliable it's not the kind of percent replacement but for simple things it can definitely help uh, designers a lot and again everyone can use it I, I need uh, some image, I just write what I want, click some buttons, choose template, and that's it, it's done. I don't need to write the request to a designer and then they wait, I don't know, like several hours a day and then receive something and then ask for maybe some fixes and so on. So it really radically transforms the workflow. And of course, designers do work a lot with other stuff, but this basic work really replaced by AI right now. Maybe good for them so they can focus on um, UX and UI more. Uh, we'll see. Um, so guys, if everything is changing, uh, because uh, we're not just talking about change of skills and budgets in the vacuum, right? Uh, that means that um, the operational costs are changing. And that means that the operational changes um, are uh, also uh, within uh, the business models of our clients. So that means that it actually affects the way how we make money. Uh, all of us, uh, both the providers of um, AI tools and the classical businesses and uh, various uh, product and services businesses. So guys, what do you think are going to be the implications for the B2B models um, or maybe B2C models if it's more uh, convenient for you? Because I understand that you work in different models as well. So we've already talked about campaign optimization, uh, consumer journey, portfolio optimization, risk scoring, and so many, so much more. So maybe you could just, just provide your thoughts and the outline, how you think it will affect the business models, basically the P&Ls that we are all responsible for. Mm, so if I talk, uh, if we talk about uh, B2B, so like it's more about B2B, then yeah, I think it's more about, uh, again, personalization of, of your offer. Previously, it was like marketing campaigns with, I don't know, I don't know TV ads for, for everyone. And now it's more personalized with like different um, media for different social uh, social networks and so on. But then it will be again, even more personalized because if you can generate thousands of images targeted to specific audience, specific kind of categories, and you can like, publish them in seconds, and then let of AI on the like Google side or Facebook decide which is better, then it will help you do your job and, and 10 times faster. And again, with better results, then you just create one, one ad spent in a week targeting the perfect ad, and then just understand that it's not really valuable and, and valid for, for your customers. So it will be, uh, everything will be more personalized uh, from, from marketing uh, to emails, and then to again outreach and then you know sales uh sales calls uh, and and follow-ups and so on it will really be tailored to needs of clients uh, their roles their i don't know the information that you get from you know lead forms and from social media 
Uh, and of course, it will help to uh, again reach kind of more people because uh, uh, AI with the help of again people sales and marketing will be able to reach a much larger audience with kind of more personalized, tailored, specific uh, needs, specific kind of tuned ads, and yeah, so it would work like this way. Uh, and uh, I think. Um, Maybe not so many companies are doing such things right now. So again, if you want to uh, be kind of uh, in a secure spot, uh, better to invest time in finding the right tools and uh, and checking what what's happening there and providing some experiments inside your organization to help your B two B company to succeed in this kind of future turbulent EA time. Okay, so you paint in the future of hundreds of thousands of campaigns uh, executed at the same time, uh, which will, of course, generate more money and uh, about more complex customer journeys that we will have to service. But what about the copyright issues with the generated images and uh, other legal part of the business related to that? Would we be consumed in lawsuits or will we have to spend half of the time uh, putting on the hats of uh, compliance and legal? What do you think? Mm, yeah, it was, uh, I can just have a simple story uh, from my side and then Martin, I think, can add more context. Uh, uh, yeah, so it was, uh, we had a hackathon about I know, eight months ago when it was started, we had some like, generative uh, things in text and in images, and there was a lot of discussions about uh, like uh, copyright uh, infringements and so on. It was like trials and, and so on. Uh, but then vendors started to provide uh, kind of right, like copyrighted images uh, uh, and like Adobe, for example. So they, they said that, okay, we don't use public domain images, or copyrighted images, just what is uploaded to our own kind of clouds, our own services, so you can use it safely. And then they introduced it to Adobe Photoshop and other Adobe tools, and everyone loves it. I mean, all the designers who were skeptical, they now use it every day without any like, problems or issues. Uh, it just like vanished, all the like, fears vanished uh, for designers. So this was like our case, and, and I think it actually, will happen with other things like text copyrights for chat GPT and so on and other things uh, for images. So there are some issues. So maybe someone, some images were like stolen or something like that. But with next generation, with all this like right uh, um, legislation, it will be fixed. Like in half a year, a year, definitely be fixed. All right. So Igor is an optimist. What about you, Martin? What do you think? What are the implications for the B2B model is going to be? And will we have any risks? You mean, you mean again, from the copyright side of things? Well, maybe not oh. just there. Maybe oh, something okay. else as well. Maybe you see some other threats lurking in the dark. So on one hand, we can improve our portfolio. We can optimize it and sell the things that uh, before that uh, needed to be pushed through the board of directors, you know, and now AI is just selling it better. But there might be some other things like, for example, will AI be able to generate authentic experience? And uh, will, will, will it be able to generate the experience that will have some empathy and that will truly understand the needs of the end consumer. Because um, sometimes uh, I see the ads in my um, in my social media, which are definitely way off um, <laughs> and have nothing to do with my preferences. Uh, no, good point. Uh, I think we are in the, in the era of content not being a problem to be created. Uh, this brings, of course, the copywriting uh, aspect. It's uh, absolutely in the table right now for a, a lot of different uh, regu regulation uh, divisions to be able to, okay, how are we going to be able to control this? Uh, especially because copyright in particular has been, uh, as of the 20th century, beginning of 21st century, very relevant for uh, people that were creating a content and where content was something limited that you would be creating, right? So that's not the case anymore. What expects us in the future is uh, quite at least uncertain for now. Um, but on the, on the B2B side, I think the main challenge will rely on if people are not able to become more scientific in their approach towards experimentation, what would the role be? 
Uh, I'm not saying that there will not be role for a very uh, specific type of copywriting capabilities for because it's a clear uh, aspect that you will be differentiating. It would probably, in my opinion, not be the most common ground. Uh, so it would be naturally something that you need to adapt and become more, how can I make AI content creation directed into the way we want to experiment with that? and be able to test and push this into the market into a way, again, more as a controller and experimentation engine, not that much about the creator. I think this will happen in the next five years for sure, if it is not happening right now. So the most important challenge, I think, for B2B companies, but whatsoever B2C companies too, is internally within the marketing team, how are going to be redefining the roles to incorporate this assistance as we were putting, which became much more effective by doing tasks that were, we were doing before as humans. So I think that would be the biggest challenge other than privacy and copyright, of course. Well, at least I know one challenge that your product marketing can help us with. This Igor says that he's planning to run uh, thousands of campaigns simultaneously, and most likely he will need to test different campaigns. And I'm sure this is where uh, yeah. Volume can help us, uh, isn't it? Yeah, especially if you're in insurance, that would be our bread and butter. If you're outside insurance, it's not that we cannot do it, but we need to yeah. focus. <laughs> and I'm sure that um, there are quite many capabilities on the way that can help you uh, basically shape the cost of uh, testing various campaigns, because it seems like sometimes that we are even going way overboard with the personalization, you know, that uh, at some point I'm just uh, asking myself, like, where is this point where we should stop? Like, what is the um, number of the, of the user base that is still worth chasing? Like, should we maybe go back a bit to, uh, you know, still, because I, well, I'm brand manager, so of course I'm a safeguard of, um, of the brand image and the essence and all the holy bibles so of course um like distinct personalization sometimes scares me but we'll see i think that it's great that now we have so many ai based products that can test the things for us and uh, cut the cost and just prove what works best um so yeah kudos to you guys all right, so we've already touched base a little bit, uh, the content, right? So as we know, like the um, past 20 years have been the, the era of content is the king, content is dead, long live the king, who's the new king, and uh, all the talk has been around that. And um, sometimes it seems like there is too much content. And I think that with the ever-changing algorithm, it's not, now much more difficult to actually promote content than just to generate uh, compelling content. But there is another interesting thing that is happening. At the data challenges panel uh, yesterday, I heard an interesting thought uh, that too much content has been over Already generated by AI itself. And it seems like AI is getting to the loop. It continues to learn on the content that it has produced itself or it has been produced by other AI, but not humans. And if all content is AI generated, uh, which data set will AI use to continue learning? Do we actually need maybe some new people who would be um, writing content in order to make AI learn in the future uh, in the absence of, um, of um, user-generated content? What do you think, guys? Um, if I... So I think, okay, yeah, Martin, please start. No, 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 go, go, go. It's good, you had yeah, already a link. Uh, yeah. So uh, I saw uh, some like, interviews with uh, OpenAI staff who actually uh, involved a lot in this process, and they uh, so the idea is what we have about like two to three years uh, until we have like not enough content because there are still quite a lot of like hidden uh, like internet. I mean something what is uh, for example not accessible to this web. Uh, crawlers and also we have uh, private content uh, uh, companies and so on and they are actually doing uh, a lot of like measures to like grab more information to to train new models and so on so until now we more or less kind of safe uh, i saw there there are some kind of researchers that um test this kind of abilities to be trained on like AI generated uh, knowledge and actually it works like poorly 
then and training on kind of human generated knowledge uh, so there will be some problem in, in several yes for sure uh, but uh, for now either you know, models will be able to really like generate new knowledge out of what we have like all, all the like connections inside and everything what is for example uh, changing like rapidly uh, during the day or during the month for example new knowledge with connection to everything what is inside uh, machine learning model or there will be uh, a kind of cheap AI generated content for everyone and then VIP luxury human generated uh, articles uh, and uh, books and so on for for people who pay you know, much more for this like human touch something like that so we will have this kind of distraction or dif uh, different kind of section of of something that can be accessible for cheap and, and something that can be accessible as a, like paid material subscription and so on which is generated by human i i think something like this okay. if, if i may add, bring it from another angle and more from the broader perspective as, as humans i don't think we'll ever stop generating content although we do have a content machine but because of our nature like we need to generate content in whatever form i mean whether it is for our job whether if it is uh, some musician amateur musician whether it's for copywriting or my own blog uh it's i think it's independent of what we have on the ability of the tool in this case that could create unlimited content and could inspire themselves from prior content such as Art, artists have been inspired by other artists in the past, right? Um, so I'm not concerned we'll ever stop generating content. I do think that we need to use these tools to generate better content or to, in the case of uh, performance uh, optimization, to experiment more, uh, to be able to bring our ideas with more, uh, if we pull it, put it into ads or content, uh, in a much more effective way, but I'm not that worried about us stopping generating content because I think it's inherited into our nature. Well, I agree, guys. Um, I think it's it's even our brain that looks a little bit like AI. Maybe some people created AI were inspired by the beautiful machines we have Absolutely. in our heads. <laughs> guys, I think it's in our nature to scan the environment all the time and at the same time create something, whether it's, we can call it content, any type, you know, reaction to whatever we see to self-express. So I think that, yeah, most probably we will never stop and yeah, it's going to be about the quality and the price, which is important. All right, guys, um, I see a question in the chat with, that we have not answered yet because we've answered uh, already two, by the way, from the chat. So, guys, our viewer who's watching us right now is asking, how can AI help preserve the uniqueness of a brand and dif differentiate the company in the competitive landscape of modern marketing? If, if I may, I think it quite, uh, it's quite a quite interesting question. We still don't know, of course. Uh, we need some time. But if I may try to guess, this would be coming the role of someone that eventually needs to experiment with multiple creation of content, leveraging AI, leveraging their own company ideas, but then being able to guarantee you, you Anna mentioned that you're a brand ambassador. I imagine you're all eventually happening something like this in the, in the next few years guaranteeing that the communications are happening within the brand that we have defined, which makes us unique and does not uh, uh, makes us similar to others that are also using these tools because we will all will use this, these tools. So I think that role of uh, us, someone is the editor of a magazine and although all the copywriters kind of created the blog, they wanted to have this editorial image. I think this is the, the role that uh, we would need to happen to, to make sure that the brand is uniquely preserved yeah Thanks. i can also add <laughs> yeah i can also add from from my experience so i, I try to create a kind of quick kind of review of of some like uh, AI, uh some of youtube video about ai and i asked ChatGPT to create an article and actually it, it uh, really creates something really generic uh, like so something like do good things and don't do bad things something like that but so the problem is that uh, in order to again get to a point when you have a really good review you need to use details and, and i tried like several 
methods there are tools to actually grab these details from 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 summary and from original video and, and couldn't and and this is the way like where the generative ai kind of fail right now so you definitely still need uh this um again human in the loop and a human who have this knowledge of how like brand behave what is a brand voice to actually do manual work and, and and do this like again editorial work as such martin said because it, it doesn't fit like every company the the style of ai and uh, the content it's what is generated by ai uh, and of course you can train your own model like understand what is the i know what, what is the original what is the article how it should look like uh, you, you need just about like 100 uh, pages of content like this but it will still need a lot of again, human touch later uh, to be understandable by human to give them value and so on uh, and this is something what can be done by ai this is something that people will really value from from companies with large kind of marketing departments then they pay attention to the details and this is how you can kind of stand up out of the crowd uh, and if I may, I, I tried because Anna, you requested us and when we were preparing the, the panel to have some jokes, I requested the chat to do some AI and marketing jokes and were terrible. So I did my own editorial there uh, because otherwise, yeah, it would have been a very bad content uh, that we have been sharing. So, yeah, we still need each other to preserve this empathetic uh, value that uh, the products and the services are bringing and we still need somebody human to keep it human because people still need people right all right guys um we are almost out of time and i would like to um, maybe end up our discussion our panel today on a note which is quite classic but nevertheless it's about the future but i would like to uh, maybe wrap it in a different rapper um because um well we're not getting younger aren't we and uh the more um we age the more it's about actually priorities and time is finite time is the only thing that is that that we can run out of we will never run out of uh, space on cloud we'll never run out of requests in chat gpt but time is the only thing that is finite and time is attention so basically how will ai help marketers win the war for attention because um, the competition is not really evident like should i learn a new skill with the help of ai or go meditate or should i cook a meal uh, or i don't know go for a run or should i um launch five more campaigns and play around with a graphic tool or something like that so it all seems to be quite non-linear um it is well i mean success is very different uh sense of life is very different for different people so what do you think how will ai help marketing people win the war of attention for attention in the next coming years because attention i think is the only true uh, thing that is generating money in the modern world it's a nice angle um if, if i may i think it comes down again to understanding your users your your customers and then the positioning around it then eventually it's a matter of how you can position that message in the right channel to get the attention. What I do see as a great challenge is that as users, as customers, especially with these kind of tools, especially if you're in the B2B realm, the positioning of your company could change because the needs of their your customers did change. So this is very classic, but you still need to be very in close contact to understand which is the problems that your customers are mostly, mostly interested in and then eventually helping with AI to be able to create multiple content variables for that positioning that you have defined without AI, because this is something you will not be able to replace that empathy you will be having with your customers on how to better position your solution towards that specific problem. Yeah, and, and this, I think then kind of human touch can, can really make a difference. Uh, so. I try to so when I try to create a kind of you know, science fiction or some story, it's actually again some really generic some kind of compilation of, of, of different things. It, it doesn't, uh, I don't know, 
aim for for, for specific kind of value or um, emotion or something like that. And and I think um, this is what still uh, done kind of much better uh, and kind of well by professional writers and, and poets and so on. And um, again, you need to find these people who have this like skill and, and talent to write like really good stories and uh, good content if if you want. And then use AI to enhance and to multiply the effect of this person or several person to again to 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 give people value to give people like right emotion and, and right um i don't know value of life uh, because of your product and so on and um, i don't think uh, actually i will be like close to this uh to this area maybe not in like two to three years even with all the knowledge from the internet i think it's something that is inside human beings for now but yeah we'll see maybe just to rephrase not generic but essential because yes. such things as trust yeah, as um respect as uh, care they are essential um to all of us all right guys that's been terrific so everyone who's watching uh here i'm martin and Igor. they work at folio me and at reich i work at data art check out our career pages because as you know people need people so we are always hiring and check out the amazing uh products uh, which are reiki and follow me and i would like to say thank you all and let's hope that the redefining of the marketing department will be a supercharge and not a total annihilation <laughs> but uh after spending this hour with you I have zero fears. I hope that the next couple of um, years will be much fun in the profession. All right. Thank you, guys. And see you soon, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.